I'm done living in fear with the coronavirus. Literally the only reason why I'm wearing a mask in stores is because they're required and I get weird looks when I do not wear a mask. I'm done putting my life on hold for it. I'm sorry, but I am. If Sally Mae at the family barbecue, who is immune compromised, wants to show up to the barbecue, guess what? I'm going to too. <laughs> immune compromised. Uh, no. Immune compromised. I've never, no. Mm -mm, no. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another MLM top fails video. So what is an MLM top fails? Basically, I just compile my favorite clips from the week, submissions that people send me, and this week we have some of the best submissions ever. Uh, one of them in particular, really, it's just... <laughs> You know, nothing surprises me anymore. But anyway, you guys are in for a real treat today. So before we begin, make sure you leave a like if you like these kind of videos and subscribe if you're not already. And without further ado, let's just get into the video. Okay, this video is a beach body coach. And we've seen this girl before. She's the one that was saying that she's so thankful for this biz because she gets to be with her boyfriend through times of crisis. And meanwhile, she was working all throughout her boyfriend's dog dying. And it was just, it was a mess of a video. I mean, it's a mess, it's a mess, okay? But anyway, this video is even a bigger mess, so let's begin. Okay, like the any bit of overwhelm that I was feeling has completely melted away just with the excitement of what is about to fucking happen for May. Like I'm so freaking excited. And I was looking at all the numbers from April, like April was literally the best month by a landslide and May is about to be even better. Like we're about to just blow it out of the park. I'm so excited. <sighs> but you guys, it doesn't just happen. Like this doesn't just happen. It takes so much hard work. And I think so many people like just don't realize the like what really goes into this business and like how you have to show up to build to where I am today. And like I remember being a baby coach being like, I'm gonna like I'm gonna build a six figure business, I'm gonna retire my reti retire, I'm gonna retire Brandon. Like I remember saying those things and people were like, This girl is fucking crazy. But then like here I am, 14 months later, doing the damn thing, showing y'all that this is possible. I haven't like reached those goals yet like every single month I'm just like wait a minute <laughs> you just said you were doing the damn thing and you <laughs> next slide you're like well I haven't reached those goals yet though <laughs> it's like, um I don't know about that mind blown at like how close I am and like mind blown my team just like 10x every single month in its growth and just like seeing my girls show up it's like holy shit like those things are real like that is such a reality for us now and it's like I quit my eight to five when I you know match my salary um six months into this business and now to be looking and being like wow like really truly I will on my having had two years into this business i will have 100 percent have built a six-figure business and that's like never in a million years did i think that i really could do that but i just said it and i put it out into the world and i did the fucking work i stuck through like the hard times i i just like was in the trenches and like now this is where i am like this is my reality and it's like and i used to say that anyone can do this but I don't believe that anymore. And honestly, like oh. anyone can become a coach, right? Not anyone can build a successful business to the degree that I have built. And like, honestly, I have brought on probably 50 coaches to my team and I currently have like 10 solid rock stars. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> What? Let me just go back over what she just said. She said, I don't believe anymore that anybody can do what I do. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> And, she, and then she says, she's brought on over 50 coaches and only one-fifth, 10, have what it takes. Only 10. Now, for the other 40, okay, allegedly, that you brought onto your team, if you're watching that right now, please, I'm begging you, leave that team right now. What a joke. This reminds me of a couple videos ago where we watched that team call. 
and basically these people were getting berated about how they weren't working hard enough, blah, blah, blah. You cannot let people talk to you like this. You cannot let like your upline, you know, just shit all over you, say you're not working hard enough, that you don't have what it takes. I mean, these people are diabolical. Okay. Every time I say the word diabolical, I think of Plankton from SpongeBob, but I'm, I'm disgusted. I, I'm sorry. I'm disgusted at this behavior, at this attitude at, towards your downline. And you know, here, let me, let me say something right now. I need to say a piece because I've been thinking about this for a while. I feel like it really does come down fundamentally. Obviously these people don't have respect for other people and especially the people that they work with who are on their team. But what constitutes a good business? Most businesses, they're built in the shape of a hierarchy. Like there's the CEO, there's you know all the people at the bottom, but it's the people at the bottom who make the company what it is, right? If you have a weak foundation, then your company is not gonna be very good. What's fundamentally wrong with these MLM companies is that the bottom of these pyramids, of the bottom of the hierarchy is extremely weak and it can't even stand up on its own because people aren't even making money, they're losing money, right? They're being absolutely shit on by the people who are the higher up ranks of the, of the structure. And it's disappointing to see above all else, the way people are disrespected when the people who work for the company make up the company and make it what it is, right? It makes great companies. That's what makes great companies are the people at the bottom. It's disgusting when I see people like this acting this way towards their downline because you need your downline more than your downline needs you, okay? It's disgusting to see something like this. It really is. So if that tells you anything, it's like, you know, one in five, one in 10, no, one in five would be the math on that. Uh, one in five people like actually show up and put in the work like it is not it is not hard but it's not easy it's like it's easy to do easy not to do and if you're not able to like step outside of your comfort zone and like shut the fuck up the voices in your head that are like oh i'm too afraid what people think of me on instagram you're never going to be successful in this business and that's just me being so real because i don't want to keep attracting people who are too afraid to post on social media because that is what this business is now we understand why she's going on this rant so obviously a lot of people are coming into the business on her team she's recruiting a lot of people who decide hey i don't really want to work with this toxic ass person anymore I don't want to work under her and I don't want to be in this business that actually kind of sucks. So she's mad about that and she's going on this rant. She's being so passive aggressive and rude to people that have either quit or her, are currently on her team but aren't maybe pushing for ranks or not business building or whatever. This is amazing to me that anybody would want to be in this. And I see this nonstop. I see this so much and it's like, gosh, I don't know how anyone would want to be part of any of this, you know? Unfortunately, what I've found is just that like the average person is not willing to do the work on themselves because the number one thing to be successful in this business is to have a strong mindset and to like give 110% to your own health and fitness and growth journey. And if you're not willing to do that, you literally will never be successful in this business. And it makes me so sad because the coaches that quit, it's like they're quitting on themselves. They're like, you know what? I'm not worth doing the mindset work. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. This is so manipulative. This is crazy. It's, it, this is what the words say on the screen. It makes me so sad because the coaches who quit are quitting on themselves because they're willing to do the work on themselves that it takes to be successful in this biz, but also in their life. Okay. She didn't even write that out right. But she's basically saying people who quit are quitting on themselves because they're not willing to work on themselves. What? She's trying to manipulate people into staying by using this. I mean, it's so, this is disturbing. And the growth that it takes to actually be successful in this business or in my life, you guys, like no matter what, you're gonna have to face it at some point that you're gonna have to like do that work. You're gonna have to like get over those insecurities and those voices in your head that tell you that you're not enough. Like that to me is truly like the difference between a successful coach and not successful coach, someone who quits before they even start or even try because like those voices in their let me just read this she said the difference between a successful coach and a coach who quits before they even really try is the narrative and stories they are telling themselves are the stories you're telling yourself and the patterns behaviors you're creating serving you people are not quitting because they're like oh my god i'm just i can't do it i just don't think i'm good enough blah, blah. i don't that's not why i don't think i really don't think in my experience i don't think that's why people are quitting 
Okay. I think they're quitting because they're looking at their finances. They're actually taking an objective look at their finances, or maybe their significant other is, who, some, or someone who cares about them is looking at them and saying, hey, I'm actually not making any money, <laughs> okay? I'm spending more money than I'm making, and my upline is extremely toxic, and I'm feeling like this community is toxic. These people are telling me I'm not working hard even though I know that I am. I think leaving an MLM is you're doing more for yourself. You're finally saying, you know what? Like, I deserve more than this because I am working hard, and it's statistically nearly impossible to make money. I think it's people that actually have a lot of respect for themselves and they say, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm gonna respect my own time and I'm not just gonna throw it away, being on my phone all the time. I wanna get my life back. That's what I think people quit for, okay? Not because of this. And for her to be so manipulative, it's like, yikes. I'm gonna end my rant, but the last thing I'm gonna say is you guys, like as a coach, I said this, like the number one most important thing that you do is be 100% committed to your own growth journey. Like that is what we do as coaches. That's what it takes to be successful in your life in any area of your life is to be committed to that. And like as a coach, we help you do that. I give you all of the tools and resources to strengthen your mindset, but you have to be willing to do the work like you have to show up you have to put your fears insecurities like all the bullshit excuses and stories you tell yourself aside and step into that new version of who you want to be that's the thing is like these people come to me and they like want it so fucking bad but not bad enough not bad enough that they are willing to do the work do the work on themselves and then like the other sacrifices that i've had to make like the long days like the stress like those things are nothing when you have done the work in here okay well anyway i think you get the point this is somebody who's extremely manipulative please don't fall for this narrative that you're just not working hard enough i've got this all the time from people in my emails this is the number one reason why people tell me that they leave is because their upline was non-stop telling them that they weren't working hard enough. That is the number one thing that people tell me. So, you know, just please don't believe that narrative because I'm sure that you're doing everything that you can do and it's just, it's not in the cards. Like with these businesses, it's just not in the cards. Those people aren't making any money. Nobody's making any money. People are not making money. So, so the next fail this week is surrounding an MLM that we don't usually talk about. I don't know if I've even ever talked about it on this channel yet, but it's around paparazzi jewelry. So this one's going to be very interesting because I'm going to try to dive into some of the financials and the reality of what people are making. I think that that's very interesting. I think it's very effective in getting people out, getting people to realize and see the light around these things. But anyway, paparazzi jewelry, what is paparazzi? They sell $5 jewelry, which is interesting because typically in MLMs, the prices of the products are inflated to account for the commission rates that they have to pay out to their consultants. So with paparazzi, these consultants are getting anywhere from 35% to 45% commission rates off of the products, and it's $5 jewelry. So basically what that translates to is, this is really crappy cheap jewelry <laughs> very crappy very cheap i think the consultants typically buy it for around 275 and these consultants have to buy a ton of inventory it's kind of like lularoe where you, you are required to have kind of a lot of inventory and i see a lot of the consultants doing this inventory loading thing where they have so much and they just have like walls of jewelry behind them. So it gets very, very pyramid schemey where you're like, oh, that's a lot of product that you're holding on to. You're definitely looking like you're the customer at this point rather than the seller. So I was sent a really interesting email for this submission and it was basically a screenshot of a high up paparazzi consultant and she posted her sales. So her total sales, personal sales, for that month and i think that's interesting because it gives us a lot to work with in terms of like kind of being able to estimate how much somebody is making obviously the income disclosure statements are out there so we can kind of you know guesstimate what people are making off of this kind of stuff so this is the screenshot so she posted that she made four thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars in sales so she sold a lot of freaking jewelry uh, in the month of April herself. That was personal. She wrote in the comments. So she also wrote uh, last month's sales, commissions not included. So it just, these are the hashtags, watch me or join me. But I'll, either way, I'm going to the top. <laughs> Hashtag want to play paparazzi with me. Hashtag do what you love, love what you do. Hashtag financial freedom. Hashtag are you an entrepreneur? <laughs> so 
Okay, gotta love it, I guess. So basically here's what I would do. I'll just take you through kind of what I would do. And again, you can check my math on this. I'm sure I don't have like the total information. All I can do is estimate really uh, based on paparazzi income disclosure statements and all that jazz. But so anyway, I was told that she is an executive producer in paparazzi. So the ranks go consultant, star consultant, director, premier director, and then executive director. And it says the percent of consultants earning monthly commissions at executive director level is only 1.48%. So this person is in the top 1% of paparazzi, which is very interesting. Keep that in mind as we go along, okay? Next to it, the highest monthly bonus, lowest monthly bonus, and then average monthly bonus. So that's the bonus that you make off your team's sales. So it's around, I think, 10%. So I'm just gonna use the average monthly bonus. So anyway, let's go over to, let me get my calculator really quick here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take the $4,417 in sales. Obviously, just looking at her sales, the commission's gonna be much lower than that. So what I did was I took 4,417 and I multiplied it by 45%. Paparazzi consultants typically make 35 to 45% commission rate. I'll just assume, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that it's 45% commission rate. So that comes out to $1,987.65. You know, for the month, she would make that much in commission, right? And then based off of the paparazzi income disclosure statement at the executive director level, um, it is around $900. You can see the average monthly bonus. So I'm just gonna assume that it's the average monthly bonus. You have to also take into account that if somebody's posting something like this, like if they're posting their sales, obviously it was one of their better, if not their best sales month ever, right? You're never gonna post something if you like had kind of a shitty month. <laughs> Like, let's just be honest. So um, we're, we can assume that this is either an out of the ordinary month for her or it's kind of like a usual month. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the average monthly bonus and add that to what her commission was. We're just gonna assume that she's being very consistent. However, obviously direct sales is kind of like any job in sales where it's kind of you know volatile it's up and down your income's never really the same so anyway let's take the one thousand nine hundred eighty seven dollars and sixty five cents plus nine hundred average monthly bonus and then it comes out to two thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars and sixty five cents per month so let's take that and we'll just multiply it by 12 again assuming that she's completely consistent which she probably is not to get an estimated yearly income so that would be thirty four thousand six hundred and fifty one dollars okay paparazzi consultants buy a lot of inventory so i asked this girl who emailed me and sent this in because she knew a lot about the paparazzi structure and the compensation plan and all that stuff i said how much do people typically do like buy an inventory and she said that the girl that she had been messaging with before said that she had around 5,000 in inventory. You have to also keep in mind that they have personal volume, so they have to order a certain amount of jewelry each month in order to stay active. You're constantly having to get new jewelry for the season or for whatever, if you sell out of something and you're buying a lot of jewelry that a lot of people don't even want. Uh, so it's something you have to keep in mind that they also don't have any benefits that a traditional job would have. You know, if you look at this number, this $34,000 number for the year, that's very good, unfortunately. <laughs> for an MLM company. Like that's something that you really don't see a lot is people making that much. Like, I'm not kidding. I really don't see people making that much, hardly ever in any of these companies. And that's sad. That shows how low the bar is for these types of companies. And like I said in the beginning, this is the top 1% of the company and she's only making $34,000. And I say only making $34,000 because that's not really a livable income if you live in the United States. So anyway, I think that it's very helpful and effective when you run the numbers on these kinds of things. So this person, it might look like a lot and they're like, oh, I sold $4,000 worth of jewelry, which is great, you know, I guess for a side hustle, but you know, is that really great for your full-time job? Just in doing this anti-MLM thing, for kind of a while now, I've noticed that when you run the numbers on these things and you really take a look at the finances, I think that it's very helpful to people and seeing the reality of these things. And I just think it's interesting, just one more thing before we move on because I think that it's worth looking at. In the paparazzi income disclosure statement, so executive director, who's the top 1% of the company, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ranks above the top 1%. Now tell me again how that is not a freaking pyramid scheme, dude. Tell me again how the not even the top 1% is making all of this money 
And then the people at the bottom are just are barely scraping by. The top 1% is not even making that much. So anyway, just some stuff to look at. I think it's very interesting and uh, yeah. So the next video we're gonna watch is an absolute delight. And this is coming from a Ronin Fields distributor. Gotta love Ronin Fields. We've talked about Ronin Fields before, but they're similar to paparazzi. I mean, they're similar to all MLMs where the income disclosure statement does not lie. It tells a very sad story. So once again, it's the top 1% are hardly even making a livable income in the company. So it's pretty shocking. And this is a girl who is just so condescending. So. Here we go. In fact, for everybody, um, did you know that whenever I'm talking to somebody and they find out what I do and they'll say something like, oh, you're part of one of those pyramid scheme things. I just look at them and I go, oh, like, what do you think a pyramid scheme is? A hundred percent of the time, they actually can't tell me. I find it really funny because people throw that word around like it means something, but it means absolutely nothing to them because they can't even stand behind a definition. I guess my advice to everybody who chooses to throw that word around would be look it up, find out what it means, and once you actually understand what a pyramid scheme is, then feel free to use it. She just said, once you actually understand what the definition is, then feel free to use it. And here's, this is her definition, okay? This is what she says a pyramid scheme is. I'm gonna save you guys some time here. There are two key things that define a pyramid scheme. One, no matter how hard you work, you will never be able to make more money than the person above you. And number two, they will not be selling a product, just an idea. So, got a couple problems with this. First of all, the attitude. Oh my God, if you see something like this, let's just say you're like, see a video like this, are you gonna to wanna to go into business with somebody who's that snarky and that rude? and that condescending, and that patronizing, I I just, I cannot believe some of the way that people talk. I mean, they're so pressed that people tell them that they're in a pyramid scheme. It's so funny, but what's really annoying about this, you know why she says 100% of the time they never can actually tell them what a pyramid scheme is? Because she has her own definition of what a pyramid scheme is, and she's waiting around for somebody to tell her what her definition is, okay? Which her definition that she's going off of is, by the way, not even correct. <laughs> so she's gonna be waiting a long time, okay? That percentage is always gonna remain at 100% then. If this was true, then Herbalife wouldn't have gone through a $200 million lawsuit and had to pay out like all, pretty much all of their consultants and forced to restructure. It was nearly impossible for people to make money in that. So I just wanna point this out because this is on the FTC website and I think that it's very interesting. So the title of the article is The Telltale Signs of a Pyramid Scheme. Your income is based mainly on the number of people you recruit and the money those new recruits pay you to join the company, not on the sales of products to consumers. So, you know, what do we see in all these companies? What is this girl even doing with this video? Which is very ironic. Is she's basically trying to recruit people still into the company. She's trying to break down this like argument to try to recruit people into the company who are apprehensive to join the company. So you know, this recruiting model, this recruiting structure, recruiting so many consultants and then making money when those people sign up, that's an obvious telltale sign, obviously, of a, a pyramid scheme. And this is, again, according to the FTC, who's the one who's dishing out all these lawsuits to these companies. The number two point is you're forced to buy other things you don't want or need just to stay in good standing with the company. So, like, I would see that as keeping a rank. So I see that as personal volume. I have no idea why people need to order things that they don't want to order in order to sell. I have no idea why people need to to pay money to go work for a company. I don't understand that whatsoever. That is obviously very indicative of being in a pyramid scheme, in my opinion. Also in the FTC's opinion, apparently. So anyway, let's keep watching. The only last thing I wanna say is I would encourage everybody to step back, look at the current job situation that they're in, and just ask themselves, hmm, am I ever gonna make more than the person above me? Am I ever gonna be able to make more money than my manager, than my boss, than the CEO of this company? And if the answer is no, then that's more of a pyramid scheme than an MLM company. And so it's just food for thought, something to think about. I'm not dissing any jobs out there. I was a waitress for years and I absolutely loved it. I love the social aspect. I love the tips. I love everything about it. Um, so please don't be offended by this at all. Um, my only thing is I just see the word thrown around so much by people who have no clue what they're 
talking about and I would just love to see everybody educate themselves before jumping to conclusions and actually standing on truth instead of opinions so yeah anyways that's all oh my god I'm not kidding stuff like this really triggers me I mean it really really triggers me because I cannot stand this fake nice like I just I really want you to stand on opinions I just I can't I can't listen to people like this because I cannot believe every time somebody who is in an MLM tells anybody to go educate themselves anybody I mean it is so insane to me it's insane and I would love to see everybody educate themselves before jumping to conclusions start standing on truth and facts instead of opinions dude the truth and facts is in your income disclosure statement, okay? You're not making any money. So when I was sent this, this was the message that I got along with it. And it said, this girl tried to recruit me for Ronin Fields for two years. And I finally told her to please stop. And she said she'd never succeed with me. I guess I'm a dream squasher. Oh my God. <laughs> so here is this person, okay? If, if you're not in a pyramid scheme, Riddle me this. Why are you trying to recruit people? Okay, why are you trying to recruit people for two years? It's embarrassing. I mean, this is embarrassing. Two years and you're sitting there on social media. Please educate yourself because you don't know what a pyramid scheme is. 100% of the time, I don't know. You, No one can ever tell me what a pyramid scheme is. Yeah, because you're sitting around waiting for a specific definition that is in your head that helps you rationalize why you're scamming people. Okay, that's why you're never gonna find the right definition. Here's the right definition. Recruiting people, recruiting people nonstop, making money off recruiting people. You wouldn't be recruiting people or even messaging this girl if you didn't make the majority of your money this way, okay? And because you make the majority of your money this way, it becomes virtually impossible for other people to make money in these businesses. That is what a pyramid scheme is, okay? Point blank, period. So this fake nice, like, just please educate yourself. I mean, please stop trying to scam people. Please stop messaging people for two years, okay? So anyway, God, that one makes me so fucking mad. That one really like seriously triggers me. Okay, I've saved the best for last. Are we ready? So this is, <laughs> this is one of my favorite coaches on planet earth and she is a beach body coach she's higher up than normal than i would you would expect that she would be in the business and i want you to think about someone who says something like this would that fly in your business you know this shouldn't i don't think this should fly honestly in any sense of in anywhere in the world even just saying this in on a public forum is is insane to me but this is also the girl who <laughs> was crying about the puna Cana trip being canceled uh for beachbody so think about you know she's crying over that and then we see this video next okay enjoy this out there i feel like i've been talking all day on here already but i'm done living in fear with the coronavirus Literally, the only reason why I'm wearing a mask in stores is because they are required and I get weird looks when I do not wear a mask. She says, this is on the screen, riddle me this, why the f*** do COVID tests have to basically touch our brain up our nose to test for it, but a little spray from our mouth or others can infect us? Why not swab our cheek to test for the virus if it's that easy to contract? Okay, so she's a doctor, I guess. I'm done putting my life on hold for it. I'm sorry, but I am. If Sally Mae at the family barbecue, who is immune compromised, wants to show up to the barbecue, guess what? I'm going to, too. <laughs> immune compromised. Uh, no. What the hell? Immune compromised. I've never, no. Mm -mm, no. Immune compromise. No. I'm sorry. I'm no. I'm sorry. No. No. Immune compromise. Okay. Anyway. You guess what? I'm going to too. I'm not going to continue living in fear and living in my house and doing absolutely nothing. Let me just reiterate. So she says if Sally May, 
who's immune <laughs> compromised, shows up to the family barbecue, she is going to too. She doesn't care anymore. So that's a bold thing to say online. I just don't know. I mean, I just don't know. I don't know what else to say about this, but this is, wow. We can contract, we, we can get this, this virus from anything. Anything. UPS dropping off a package to her house. Accidentally putting our fingers in her mouth while we're out. I don't know how many times you guys accidentally put your fingers in your mouth when you're out. I'm sorry, but my fingers are just not falling in my mouth when I'm out. Like, I just, I, they're not accidentally flying in my mouth when I'm outside, but okay. I'm sorry, but in what world is this okay to get online and like speak like this and talk like this? Okay, this is, this is just a bad take. I mean, this is a bad take. This is a bad take. And any other company, any other company that has any sort of HR, PR, like these companies need to get an HR department or something. Like they desperately need it because this is insane. If they're under your brand name to be spewing this kind of disgusting behavior, like saying stuff like this is unreal unreal if you're employing somebody they're making money for your company attaching their name to your company going to your co company retreats in punakana or you know we're going to go into your summits and stuff it's like constantly recruiting people to the business opportunity and they're saying stuff like this on their social media you don't think that that's you think that's okay i don't know anything let's put it this way so so <laughs> Yeah, I just want to put this out there. I feel like I've been talking all day on here already. She said, if you don't like it, unfollow me. I'm done being a sheep and living in fear with it. Oh, man. Once again, this is a health and fitness coach. Has no qualifications that I know of. I've never seen anything that would indicate that she has any qualifications. Health and fitness coach is saying that she, the only reason she even wears a mask is because they're required at stores, but otherwise she probably, I think we can all assume that she wouldn't be wearing one. I mean, what is going on? And then these crazy conspiracy theories about why they're having to do the, like, the swab test. What? I'm sorry, is it that hard to wear a mask? I really, it's really not. It's really not that hard. It's like not that hard to just be like a decent person. To just have like this reckless disregard for people who are immunocompromised. I mean, it's just disturbing. Like to see people say stuff like this, not care. I mean, there's so many things wrong with it just on, on a personal level, but to relate this to MLMs, I think the worst part is this is somebody who's under your organization saying stuff like this. This is a health and fitness coach who's selling health workout plans, talking about health, talking about how to get you in the best health of your life. And health is total health, right? It's not pushing these crazy conspiracy theories. It's not having this disregard and this lack of education around it. You know, somebody said something on Reddit once that was one of the truest things and it, it gave me like an epiphany it, it was just something that i it stuck with me they said when these people do like this personal development right why don't they read about more about health or like pick up a health book it's always like a rachel hollis book or a fear is my homeboy book or like some other scam train book like 10x by grant cardone like that's what they always pick up it's just these scam books these these like self-help books it's like why don't you pick up a book about health? Why don't you pick up a book about nutrition? Why don't you pick up a book about exercise and food science or something like that? Why do you not pick up stuff like that? Why don't you do personal development with education, like actual education, not these dumbass self-help books that are too general to ever give you any kind of practical advice. Do you know what I'm saying? It's so wild to me. So anyway, I mean, I just had to show you that one. I can't believe it. I'm just sitting here, I'm like, I can't believe it. I can't fucking believe it. So anyway, that's it for our top fails this week. What did you think? What was your worst fail? I think we all know. Actually, this is a stupid question. I think we know. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you do. It really helps out my channel. Subscribe also if you like these kind of videos. And I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye. Every stolen kiss, every late night walk, every secret wish, every second chance, every time we dance underneath the light of street.